time for a movie review and uh, we're going to do the movie Kiss of the Spider Woman. Uh, it was released in 1985. It's directed by the Brazilian Hector Babenco. Uh, writing, Manuel Puig, uh was the novelist that the movie was based on, uh, but Leonard Schrader actually wrote the screenplay. The cast, uh, joint lead roles in this one. Uh, William Hurt plays Luis Molina. Raul Julia plays Valentine Araigo. Uh, Sonia Braga has three roles in this. She's Lenny uh, La Maison, Marta and the Spider Woman. Uh, and when you watch the movie, you will that, that will become clear to you why she has three roles. Um, uh, one of which is a complete a fantasy role. Uh, Jose Ligoy plays the warden, uh, and Milton Gongavas plays Pedro. And uh, this movie was pretty successful uh, uh, as it came a bit out of the blue, uh, but uh, William Hurt won the Acting Academy Award for his performance in the Best Actor category. He was also nominated for Best Picture, Best Director and Best Adapted Screenplay. <coughs> At the Globes, uh, further nominations for Best Picture, for Best Actor for Her and Julia, and Best Supporting Actress for Sonia Braga. And at the BAFTAs, uh, William Her won the Best Acting Award. The first uh, viewing of this movie way back in the, the 80s, <coughs> about two men locked in a prison cell, in what I perceive to be Brazil, went a little bit over my head, and the lead roles of Molina, played by her, and Va Valentin, played, portrayed by Raul Julia, seemed slow and ponderous, and there was little plot. However, uh, move on 30 years, and a completely different perspective uh, was found by me, and I can't ignore the chemistry created by the two leads. Uh, starting from their very opposite positions with regard to their reasons for being there. Now, Puig's novel, uh, written in 1976, uh, had uh, enough adjustments to the screenplay, it has to be said, particularly the last segment, uh, where the content uh, that channels psychosexual and political complexity, complexities uh, is... Uh, fundamentally the same, but uh, has been dramatised uh, for the screen. Extended dialogue between Valentina and Molino occupies the fascination of this movie. Kiss of the Spider Woman and the language is so smooth and elegant, it has to be said. Valentine is a political prisoner. He listens to movie tales spun by Molina, who's a cross-dressing sexual offender. And he's dazzled by the magnif uh, Molina that is is dazzled by the magnificence of golden age starlets. The performances of her as Molina and Julia as Valentine left me in awe as both actors perform as if it's almost a personal experience, like a calling uh, to which both were destined. For such intimate scenes to work, the actors appeared comfortable performing the scenes in an almost lifelike way, maximising the real sense of feeling. La Celle, uh at, at no time creates a feeling of claustrophobia as Molina's determination to create a diversion through relating uh, this fictional romance set in romantic Paris under the Nazi occupation. His monologue whisks uh, the listener into a dreamlike state alongside uh, Valentine, and Babenko uh, illustrates the monologue with scenes imagined, the love affair between an SS officer and a starlet, uh, a.k.a. the Spider Woman. This feeds Molina's desire to dream of such a relationship, and for Levantine, his initial hostility towards the fascist de depiction is slowly replaced by an appreciation of being able to personally escape from the cold reality of incarceration. And we as viewers are also sucked into the romance as the story leads to a fateful kiss to the lost man within the SS uniform. 
the fantasy enables Melina and Valentine to grow closer and more interdependent, an eventual instant intimacy. Valentine's co commitment to help the oppressed enable him to overcome the gender complexities that Molina exudes, and, uh, and he sees him as a helpless victim of the corrupt political system. Valentine's char character transforms from agitator to a softer uh, uh, character, and Molina also becomes more invested in their shared surroundings. As the crossdresser, Hurt's character was a tougher role and the Academy agreed when he won the Oscar, a breakthrough for individual, independent film. His interactions with his cellmate uh, portrayed gender as integral to the performance and his alternate masculinity becomes tested against his cellmate who exudes a determined manualist. A man with a feminine die identity centred on the movie land grammar, glamour sorry, of old. This role turns out to be more of a stunt as we go deeper into the film. He is in fact a plant by the prison authorities determined to get information on the political group fighting with the state government and they're offering a quid pro quo parole in exchange for intel. Her masters this with strength and grace but eventually Lamentine opens up to Molina a little and this compliant role makes for a creditable mate to Molina who understands and embraces it. However, although the information is uh, sufficient to lead to Molina's release, there is uncertainty as to what will happen uh, with the contact information and how will Molina react. This last segment isn't in the novel and to an extent it's a rather cumbersome addition to the script. Dramatisation for dramatisation self, I thought. We do, however, get reassured that Molina's feelings towards Levantine are not disposed of as mere garbage, which is reassuring. Molina never loses our sympathy because his concerns for Valentine is real, ranking second to other potential personal interests. The conclusion is somewhat tarnished by old stereotypes, but nonetheless a brave movie by a great director who previously gave us Pihoti, a film about crime, youth and sexual abuse. Molina, in retrospect, is a tragic figure. As a sex offender, he is a gay man in a cinema still unable to embrace alternative sexualities without labelling them as perverse. He, however, defends his sexuality in a rather ham-fisted and dated manner. For its time, 1985, the film slightly opened a door to let heterosexual society inside and have a glimpse of what was happening. Ideologically, it's intriguing, as it may be, uh, but Kiss of the Spider Woman remains stuck at the threshold of the cinematic closet, but was welcomed at the time, and I'm glad I watched it again. It's a remarkable piece of work, so get along to see it.